Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to another D2D Spotlight, and uh, today we are going to be speaking with Alexis Gray, one of my favorite people on the planet, and one of our D2D author support representatives. Did I get this right? We're yeah, you got it right. That's, just, that's what I like to call us at least, yeah. Yeah, we're rebranding so the entire department right here on this episode of D2D yeah. Spotlight. So, I'm I like it better. Sure that my bosses are absolutely okay with that. That's fine. They're uh, it's be actually fine. it's cool seeing the comments, and it's weird not being in the comments because I'm always lurking in the yes. comments of these spotlights. I was so. going to bring that up. Like you are a resident comment lurker, um, one of there. There are a few of them out there, uh, but you you definitely pop in. I appreciate that too because sometimes we don't get anybody in the chat. Uh, we got Alyssa. Alyssa's in the chat right now. On Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. It's, it's nice to have the support of we'll both my, the people out. I work with and the people who like me, which I hope have probably, some. We overlap. shouldn't unmask the, you guys at all, though. We shouldn't unmask you because now everybody's going to be looking out for you, and it's going to look like we don't have an audience at all when you guys show up. <laughs> oh, no. So, I'll have to come up with several personas just to fill in space. It's fine. There you go. If anybody could do it, it's you with the multiple personas. So, um, Let's let's talk about okay. First of all, give me a kind of an introduction of you and what you do with Draft to Digital. All right, um, I'm as we said, Alexis Gray. Uh, for a lot of our authors, you'll probably have talked to me via email or phone call. Um, I have a lot of background in just service, like customer service industries, quality assurance. Um, so when I oh cool, I'm full screen. Uh, so. I came here. You're breaking I, the fourth wall, Alexis. You're not supposed to call things out. <laughs> well, guess what? This is one of my first pod, podcasty interview type things. I feel like occasionally I'm going to do that. Um, so I'm here to help our authors, uh, whether it's just questions they have starting out, um, if something comes up with a book project or they need assistance with the website or the formatting uh, of their book, if they have questions about that, that's just pretty much what we're authors having questions about publishing through draft to digital uh, we're here to be the line between them and the vendors as well. So when things come up on the vendor level, we're pretty much the people who will take care of that for our authors. Uh, so the job involves a lot of uh, helping authors interacting with the vendors uh, and just being there when things come up that authors need to know about or authors, are going to want assistance with. That's uh, and see that to me, that's the most important job at at Draft to Digital. The things that you guys do, because I'm out just being a, a schmuck and make you know making a ruckus and uh, being a goof, and uh, that that helps people kind of notice Draft to Digital. But the thing that always separates us from everyone else is that support. You. You and Tara and who else on the team? Can you talk about? I don't know if they want us to. Let's well, talk about all of our names show up in emails, so I think that gives me the right to bring yeah. us all up. And since I'm the one who is now making myself the face of a department, I figure it's fine. Uh, so uh, Tara is our director and the director of operations. Uh, Crystal as well is uh, the one supervising our whole team. Um, both of them, wonderful, couldn't be happier working on their team. Uh, and then just in terms of the author support representatives, that would be me, it's Anthony, it's Austin, and it's Carmen. Uh, Carmen, the newest of our team. Um, <laughs> so it's a very close-knit team. It's a lot smaller than I think a lot of our authors assume. Uh, we'll get a lot of comments like that in emails. It's like, wow, does anyone else work here? It feels like I get a lot of the same of you a whole a bunch, a whole lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and it's A, we're giving you a lot of special attention, but B, yeah, it's a small team that works very closely together to just provide the level of service that our authors have come to expect. Um, I was told when I joined this company that customer service was a huge priority in our author service department and in draft to digital as a whole. It is what I think separates us from a lot of our uh, competitors. Uh, and just, you don't get a lot of, high level service across the mark these days. And I think that we just want to make sure that we're a break from that. Uh, if you're reaching out to us via email, via phone call, we want to be providing 
a high level interaction, something where A, you like talking to us ideally. Like I don't want anyone to leave a call feeling like I've been a burden on them. Um, but beyond that, I want to feel like if I can assist them, then I've done what I can to assist them. If I can't, I'm doing what I can to get them to that point. And that is exactly the point, right? Like the, you guys are the backbone of what we do here. Like everyone thinks our business is distributing eBooks, but our real business is supporting authors in distributing eBooks. Yeah, when I took the interview here, that was a big part of what excited me about joining the company was just this pathos or this ethos that um, we're here to give authors the tools to get their words out there, to like get themselves uh, into the world. And like, as someone who values writing and values authorship, like that just, this is one of the best jobs I could have fallen into. Um, couldn't be happier, honestly. Excellent. If you couldn't be happier, that means no raises or anything are necessary. Okay, so. like I could be happier. Like this, let's not let's not take my hyperbole as word value. I'm on the cutting edge of happiness. I'm nearly to full happiness. We're in the like 95 percentile. Uh, so, what kind of things? Uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to get off into the weeds on this. So let's be judicious about what we discuss, but uh, you know, what sort of, what sort of interesting things do you guys have to deal with uh, when it comes to the author market and ser serving that author market? Let's look at behind the scenes. Like what's a typical day slash week for uh, author support? Uh, so a big part of our job, I think it breaks down to a couple things. Uh, for one, a lot of it is reviewing books as they come in. Uh, we have an amazing automated review process that takes a lot of that out of our hands because with the amount of books that come through, if we had to check through each and every one of them, our job would be borderline impossible to do in a reasonable amount of time with the amount of people we have working. Um, but the books that do come through, we check them to make sure that they're uh, acceptable on the vendor level, they meet all vendor guidelines. Uh, we're just checking them to make sure that once we get them out there, they should be good to live on vendor websites for the foreseeable future until the author has a new change they need to take care of. And we're big on getting those reviews out as quickly as possible, uh, usually within a couple of hours, just so that that process starts and it, we're getting our authors books out there as quickly as we can. And if there is something that needs review, we're trying to communicate that back with feedback so our authors can take care of these issues and get those books out there. Um, beyond that, uh, it's a lot of uh, ha handling things through emails or even sometimes face uh, Facebook chat, like we do monitor that as well. Uh, so if it, whether it's uh, an author checking in on a book project that they have a question about or they've noticed something on the vendor level they want explained to them, or honestly, a lot of it is uh, emails from new users, which we find so important because obviously a lot of our users are going to be first time authors, are going to need a little bit of extra attention and just need the things explained to them that they're not going to know about publishing or draft to digital yeah. things that we are so familiar with because we've been here and we've been helping these authors uh, over and over with a lot of the same things. And it's that experience that we want to take and use to make author experiences a lot simpler and a lot easier to understand. Because um, yeah. once you get through the process, our websites crazy intuitive, which is a lot of thanks to our dev team and our designer. Uh, so a lot of it just comes down to getting people through that initial learning process, mm -hmm. uh, which we like to think is one of the biggest parts of what we do. Um, and then of course we have uh, phone support. So we're also just available every day from nine to four central standard, I guess, technically right now it's central daylight time. Um, I actually just, just, it's just central time. Central time. I, I gave you know up on <laughs> <laughs> after last time we had a whole internal discussion. Like, is it, is it still daylight? Is that it just comes down to checking the books as they come in? Uh, if they need to be checked by human eye, uh, yeah. some of them, some of them just come through 
there's nothing even at a glance that our system looks at and thinks, oh, this could be a thing. Uh, so when a review happens and you get an email about a review, chances are we had our hands in it, we're paying attention, we're trying to do our best to just keep quality up to a draft digital standard, which we like to think is very high, so. Super high standards. Yeah, I mean, the, that's how we end up with people like Kevin. Aha, there we go, all right, well, uh, moving quickly beyond that. Uh, so you mentioned all the different ways that uh, people can reach out. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that I know people are always impressed by is like, we're the ones who will answer the phone, which has its ups and downs for us sometimes. Uh, and we, but is, what's the best way for people to reach out for support with draft to digital? So honestly, most issues, uh, I would definitely say are easier handled by email and it's not all issues. Uh, if your issue you feel is very time sensitive, then sure. That's why we're available on the phone. Um, if you, uh, are generally our email time turnaround time has been like one business day, uh, recently for all, for most, if not all emails. Uh, so we really pride ourselves on getting answers out there to get authors going. Um, if your issue involves things that are going to be easier for us to see, that's also probably uh, something that you're going to want to send to us via email because then you can send screenshots, which make everything a lot easier. Obviously, it's so much easier to solve uh, a situation when you can see what's going on. Uh, but if you're if you just have something where it's time sensitive or you've been working with us via email and there's maybe something you you just need explained to you. We're obviously here via phone, and I know that some authors' phone is just their more comfortable way of, of talking. So some authors really are not email people, and a lot of authors are not technology people, which as an internet-based company does present that little bit of a, the, the learning curve I mentioned earlier. It's the roadblock yeah. that a lot of initial authors come through. And for that reason, we want to make sure that we're available. Availability is that kind of like big key thing, because it doesn't matter how good your service to authors is if it's not around. Right. Uh, and thankfully we have a team that can work pretty easily, uh, A, together, B, remotely, which in this time right now makes it super helpful. Like it turns out to have been a good skill. Oh yeah, no, it's, I, that's the best thing is honestly that our customers, uh, our uh, time here with authors hasn't been offset like we haven't had to change up a whole lot uh, we're still able to offer pretty much the same exact uh, author services that we offered before and i think it's helped us keep things moving right now through a challenging yeah. time for everybody so yeah 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 uh i like one of the that's one of the things i've always appreciated about about how we operate is the fact that we were so versatile we're so capable of pivoting you know in the, in the moment of need and we still meet all those author needs. That's that's been pretty remarkable, I think. But so, you're uh, what is the sort of? I mean, when you're when you're kind of working with authors, like wh what's the best approach? If an author has a problem, let's say that they they published a book and they get uh, and it gets rejected, like what's the best approach for uh, getting us to help out with that? Well, usually uh, vendors or all the vendors shoot us an email say. Uh, ask for cl clarification. We have no problems going in, giving you a feel for what it is that might be up. In a lot of cases, it's going to be something metadata related. So uh, for Apple in particular, uh, capitalization of the title uh, comes up a whole lot. Sometimes it's just that the whole description is in bold text. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a laundry list of different uh, metadata issues, different um, things that might come up that are sometimes even specific to vendors. So the easiest way to get an explanation of that, shoot, shoot us an email. They're very easy emails for us to answer. And yeah. we would rather you have the sense of clarity of what it is that you need to do than have you just try and stumble around figuring it out. That brings up a good question. Like what, what, what are some of the most common problems that crop up that you guys deal with? Oh, because that are rejected. Uh, honestly, title capitalization is a huge one. Um, just either titles that are in all caps or titles that are in no caps. Uh, just taking a look at some 
to take a look at just kind of proper title capitalization for books and you should get an idea of how to get that ready. Um, sometimes it is the description stuff, uh, whether it's all in bold text or there's HTML tags that are just kind of lingering around that are going to, you don't want your book to go out there with lingering HTML tags that aren't resolved because then it's just going to look unprofessional. Um, URLs in the description, a lot of vendors have now pivoted to not wanting URLs in there. They feel like it leads away from their uh, their native environments. And so uh, we'll flag if that's a thing. Um, try, oh, uh, wraparound covers. Uh, if you're submitting an ebook e to us, make sure that you're just giving us a nice front cover image. Uh, make sure that there's a title on it. A lot of books just get rejected if we're just being sent a cover image with no title. Right. Um, which I understand, like uh, some authors might not realize that they have to put the title on there. So this is me telling you, put your title on your uh, cover photo before you submit it to us. You know, it sound, that sounds like a given kind of thing, but there are there are books out there in the traditional world that don't have titles on the cover. So I could see where authors would would uh, maybe mistakenly try to that. Not It's not mistaken if you're mimicking someone, but our vendors have rules. Yeah, right? exactly. And it's... Like I said, we're, we're at the end of the day, the rules that we enforce are generally just the rules of our vendors. We're here to make sure that your books get accepted. We don't yeah. want your books being rejected in an ideal world either. So, yeah. um, and then I'm just trying to think if there's anything that I <laughs> that I'm missing. More, more common issues. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, single author names. Um, the Apple and Cobo in particular, uh, they require you to have a first and last name in the author fields. Uh, mostly for indexing reasons. Um, so make sure that your for, your author name is a first and last name. I know some people want the the you know kind of cool single author name, the Cher, the yeah. Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, and so pay attention, Cher and Madonna. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, so if you're going to go that route, best of luck to you. Um, try try and get your special permission from Apple if you need to, but. We're we've told we've been told what we've been told. Yeah. We're just here to try and make sure your book gets through and doesn't get rejected after we yeah. submit it. So. Now, what if I want a fancy symbol uh, as the the author formerly known as Kevin might have? Can I do fancy mm -hmm. symbology as my author name? I, to my knowledge, no. I'm pretty sure it does have to be uh, alphanumeric uh, characters. So if you do that, expect a very politely worded email from us. Uh, this is unfair, Alexis. Unsubscribe. I know. I'm sorry that I'm here to just <laughs> censor your desires, Kevin. Um, you are just raining on our dreams. Uh, no. As I think these are all pretty sensible. I think most... Well, okay. I was going to make a statement that might be completely untrue. So you tell me. Most authors are reasonable slash not reasonable about feedback from uh, support. Oh, absolutely. Most... I will say the majority, the blanket majority of our authors are wonderful, reasonable people. A lot of them completely understand what it, these issues when we bring them up. And even the ones who are caught by surprise or think that it's like absurd that they have to make a certain change. When we explain the reasoning and we do try and explain the reasoning, a lot of them understand. Our, our authors, like I said, they're just wonderful people that want to get their books out there. And that's our goal in the end too. So we're all trying to get to the same place. When we understand each other, it makes that job a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. So um, what about covers? Let's let's talk about covers for a minute. Covers. Um, so are, are there some guidelines you can, because you already said we need to have our title, we need to have our author name uh, first and last name or like two names is maybe it can be the Madonna. I don't know, but what are some other guidelines or rules that we have to uh, look out for or adhere to when it comes to authors covers? You're trying to get me to say things off no, no. the very top of my head. No, no. Um, you, you bring up what you want. I'm just calling, I'm breaking the fourth wall. You, yeah, you are breaking the fourth wall. Right. Totally cheating. Uh, we <laughs> recommend a front cover image, uh, generally 1600 pixels by 2400 pixels is a good, um, size, so 2,400 tall, 1,600 wide. Um, the You want to make sure it's in, I believe it's RGB color mode. That was what I was trying to look up because I always confuse which yeah. one we will accept and which one we won't accept. Um, 
And you're going to want to make sure it's in a JPEG or PNG image. Um, we might even accept GIF, but honestly, JPEG or PNG is where you want to go. So, uh, and just make sure the title, sorry, make sure the title's on it. Make sure you don't have, uh, you know, watermarks for yeah. another website that that comes through or, or fairly or often. No, not fairly. Photo. Photo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no watermarks of any kind would probably be the best rule. Yeah. And Golden Steed has confirmed that I'm not, in fact, an idiot. And it is definitely RGB color mode. So there okay. you go. There you go, RGB color mode, and uh, isn't it isn't it GIF? Didn't we establish internally? I will I will sooner die before I give up this hill. <laughs> yes. Well, I started calling the peanut butter GIF just out of protest. GIF peanut butter. Um, <laughs> I'm the, I'm responsible for like forty percent of the dad jokes at Draft to Digital. I think Steed covers me on the rest. Right? He covers the spread. Yeah, honestly, our Slack is just very consistent between the two of you keeping us really up to date on these <laughs> cornball jokes. Um, and it really helps the day go by, and especially with everyone just kind of separated. Having having your dad jokes around is a comfort, honestly. So, it's a comfort. Thank you. I do it for the people. Um, all right. So we've kind of gone through sort of a day in the life uh, kind of thing. Can you – I mean, uh, so – Without revealing anything that might upset anyone, mm -hmm. can you think of any like uh, sort of out there cases of things you've had to deal with in support? I mean, I can. I mean, we, can't, we can't give too many details because we don't want anybody to be identified. But <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> there's certainly things that come up that have been uh, very unique. A lot of them involve the erotica genre so i do want to be very uh very careful about that um <laughs> God, uh, i should have definitely have to answer this question if it's gonna honestly it's keeping things super vague it is yeah. impressive the amount of things that people will once they have given been given our guidelines on what is yeah. and is not objectionable at vendors yeah. will then proceed to continue to defend and justify. I think uh, one of my favorites, and this is why we have human beings like you yeah. reviewing these things. People think this is totally automated, but there is a manual component to what we do at draft to digital And you, I, 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 God bless you guys. I, I wouldn't want to do it, right? But people, including things like, you know, stills from a movie as their cover or, you know, Obviously, Ooh. stolen copyright <laughs> images. <laughs> I want you to understand how many books have come through with the author named God. Um, that is oh. my pen name. That is, I <laughs> no, write under that name. Just your title. It's different. Um, no, it's, yeah, God. Uh, people who have just straight face tried to claim to be uh, the like, E.L. James or Shakespeare, which notably that last one is dead. So it's a really hard sell. Um, yeah, no, p people try and pass off a lot of things as their own work that you yeah. like, I am impressed by the gusto and the boldness of some people, but yeah, you know what you, <laughs> you do what you got to do. And we're here to let you know that some of those things you can't do. So. Yeah. I don't know. I, so I was going to write under like L E James or, you know, you know what? We've had a lot of variation names, so it's not. It wouldn't be the most outlandish thing we've ever. What's seen. the rule on that sort of thing? I've always been curious about this, actually, legitimately. Like so, when it comes to these close enough names, like what do we? What's our rule? I mean, there's a differentiate. Like there's a clear way to look at someone and go, "Okay, you are trying to co-opt someone's name if you're just kind of misspelling it." Uh, or you're trying to j j swap the names. Uh, but then, honestly, names themselves are not very steadfast. Like, uh, I mentioned E.L. James because that's a very well-known author. But uh, another author that uh, I'm aware of off the top of my head is E.L. Todd, which is a very similar naming convention, but two different authors. Both exist in their own space. Uh, so I think it amounts to, when you look at the content, is someone trying to co-opt this author's identity like you be be 
L. James or B. L. Jimmy putting out Fifty Shades of Off White, probably someone we're still going to reject. Um, <laughs> Fifty Shades of Off White. <laughs> this coming from Fifty Shades of Alexis Gray, of course. I want you to understand that picking that last name was a terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> I, when I picked it, it was very much a Jean Grey, the Grey family from the X Men. Me declaring myself as a nerd. What it yeah. actually was was me opening myself up to every Fifty Shades of Grey joke. I've only done it once, and it was in this program, so it's <laughs> recorded for life. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the thing. It's now the thing that I have to live with. You, you are my burden now. Thank you. That's fine. I lay this burden upon you, Alexis, and you have capable shoulders because you already deal with the burdens of other authors. So, <laughs> uh, so okay. What um, when it comes to like you guys are all I I I love uh, interacting with the support team and I try to help out as much as I can uh, and try to actually what I try to do is not create more work for you with some of the things I say and do which does tend to happen. So what happens when Kevin creates more work for support? <laughs> So I want to clarify that we, or at least I know some of us, me and Austin in particular, really like to follow the DHD lives when they go live. And we're watching. And when you say certain things, we get very, very anxious and go, Kevin, pick your words carefully, please, <laughs> Kevin. Mark two sometimes, that. mostly Kevin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we just... We're prepared. At the end of the day, we know that you are an amazing representative for our company and amazing representative for what we do. So you have the best intentions at heart. Yeah. Um, and that's what we keep in mind. You throw out things that we that we hear and go, oh, should he have said that just yet? All right. Well, OK. So all right, can, hey, can you think of any right, like right off the top of your head? I, you don't have to. But a lot of the times you're maybe you'll correct me and I'll stop doing it. I'll, let's see if that works. No, I think you were you were pretty quick in giving up some uh, information about uh, DHD print before it was like really a, a well known. Like right now, I think most people who are in our service or been even around service, um, a proximity was not a word. The proximity of our service uh, are aware that DHD print is something that we have in the works, something that we have in beta. But I think early on, you would occasionally drop tidbits about print that we would hear and go, oh, please don't say that yet. Oh, that's going to be an email. Okay. See, this is the challenge because my job is to get people worked up about stuff. And, and a lot of this, and I think maybe we should we should have a sort of council of D2D where, uh, hey, I'm going go to be talking about this. What's off the table? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, have, talk to Tara. Have her give you a like a no no list for Kevin. Yeah, um, we'll I'm that. sure she could give you plenty. So don't don't put your chains on me. <laughs> <laughs> we would. Yeah, yeah. We would never dream of it, Kevin. No, we're 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 excited to watch okay. you go out and give people the information about DHD, and you generate the hype. We yeah. will handle the hype if it helps. I try to I try to deflect the brunt of questions when they come in, at least through social media. So if that helps, and I start to realize pretty quickly things I should and should not have said. So <laughs> maybe I'll get better. You do a pretty good job. I will give you that. And All right. Yeah. Thank you, you very much be, for being out there for us. You don't have to be so generous. You're you're very kind. I'm All on right. camera. I have to be <laughs> for now. All right. So uh, we're getting on towards the. Uh, the Q and a section of the program here. If you're watching YouTube, Facebook does not matter. Pop into the comment section, leave us any question you want for Alexis and we will answer it. Uh, and we're mostly talking about uh, support rela related stuff, but there's some questions in here that um, I think are, are at least tangentially related. Um, we're going to pop up this first one from this attractive man. Um, on Facebook, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. Uh, what is one of your favorite things about a typical day? Uh, so it's it's tough because typical days aren't happening right now. Um, but on a actual typical day when most of us are here, um, honestly, the fact that our author services team works in a very uh, kind of close space. Yeah. Um, me, Carmen, Austin, Anthony, we all work on the same floor 
and then just a room away within listening distance for when we bicker. Um, there's Crystal and there's Tara when she's in office. And then even our ops department with Steve and Ryan is on the other side. So we're all around. We can bounce the ideas off each other. We can ask questions. A lot of times it's just sh shooting the nonsense uh, as I think YouTube friendly as I can phrase that. Um, and <laughs> like I said, sometimes bickering, it's very much a family setting of yeah. four siblings who are gonna give each other a lot of grief. Right. Um, and then all the adults who have to manage us. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of it is just that, that like close environment. And even outside of that in our other departments and in Slack, just being part of a team of people that are all focused on the things that our company wants to do yeah. And are also just in general get along really well. Like of the people who work for this company, that's a still a relatively small company. I think it's not a stretch to say we all pretty much like each other, um, yeah. which is nice. That's not a thing I've been able to say about all jobs. So that's true. Uh, like for instance, there's this wonderful guy in Canada, super nice, always a great person, constantly gives good information, uh, brings really good snacks when he comes in. Um <laughs> He's an international snack smuggler, our good friend Mark. I, I'm uh, amazed he keeps getting them past the border. So. Uh, what? Um, well, I had a question that blew right on my head. We're going to move on. Come, oh, no. You know, that's what I was going to ask you was uh, what I didn't ask you earlier was um, what before coming to Draft a Digital, did you have any experience in the uh, book world at all? No. So honestly, uh, like I said, a lot of my experience before this was more in terms of quality and just, uh, support. Uh, I worked uh, for Starwood before it became Marriott. Uh, I was a supervisor over there. So a lot of my experience is more in terms of how the department works rather than what the department works with. Um, like I said, I've always been like I, I've always been interested in the writing world. It's something that like as a hobbyist or as someone like and aspiring uh, I've always looked into, but it's amazing the amount of information I have now that I knew nothing about before coming here. And I think that's why I empathize with our authors who come in with a low amount of information in terms of the publishing world, just because even before I started working for a job at this company, I felt like my knowledge of this world was so limited and that's where they all are. So yeah. I would like to think that I'm just talking to an Alexis of three and a half years ago, whatever, however, I've been working for this company for a couple of years now, I lose track. Um, but like, I'm talking to that person who just wants to get a book out there, doesn't know anything about how to get things to vendors, yeah. how to arrange metadata. Yeah. That's, the, that's the stuff that I think about when I hey, work with right stuff of your own now, right? I'm, we want to talk, we don't have to talk about it. No, no, you know what? That's fine. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no I'm hesitation. I, we I can was, move on. No, I, there was no hesitation. I was actually okay. prepared to walk into this. Uh, okay. No, uh, yeah. Ideally, my goal is to be one of the, to throw my name into the hollowed halls with Mark and Kevin as uh, like a D two D team published author. So uh, yeah. working on a manuscript that's been stalling out because you know it's real hard to gather up some motivation during uh, a a very weird dystopia-esque timeline going on outside my window, but uh, it's definitely it's not still- like there are bodies falling from the sky or something. Well, it's, it's not quite there yet. You're right. I will say it feels like I'm living more and more in a fiction or a game where we accidentally clip through something and suddenly the settings are broken. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, I, like, I am still working on it. It's something that uh, when I talk to Mark, he'll occasionally give me that like, that. I push and or scolding to, yeah. to get back to do it to it. Yet. So um, am I going to have to start scolding you to get I back? Mean, I I respond well to scolding. So <laughs> go right ahead. Everyone may make of that as they will. Um, so we have another question from John and this one's via YouTube. Hi, YouTube audience. Uh, we hardly ever get to hear questions from YouTube. So John asks, uh, what are some tips you have to make the review process for a manuscript streamlined, streamlined rather, for both the author and the publisher? Uh, so in terms of just getting your manuscript ready, I would say, especially if you're going through us specifically, uh, there's an amazing uh, resource that we point to on the blog 
probably five times a day in emails, sorry, uh, called the Pocket Guide to Formatting. Um, if you just go into our blog, search Pocket Guide, uh, it's like that will be the first thing that pops up. It gives you everything from how to set your headings so that they're prepared for our conversion process. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a preparation for how our conversion is going to handle your formatting because some things in Word aren't going to one-to-one transfer, which I think is a big thing authors don't realize. We get a lot of emails where it's, <laughs> I put my Word document into your system and it scrambled and jumbled the whole thing and everything is a nightmare. And a lot of that's really easily explained in the pocket guide and anything that's not can be explained via the email. Um, otherwise, um, I suppose, uh, oh, you know what? A very, very simple other thing that a lot of books are flagged for. Uh, when you're going to Apple, Apple has pretty strict guidelines in terms of competitor references and competitor links. So if you have links or references in your book that specifically are meant to design to bring people over to a, a book distributor of some kind, mostly Amazon, but even then Kobo and Scribd, uh, take those things out, swap it for, uh, you know, go leave me a review at your favorite ebook, uh, ebook store or something like that. Something that Apple is going to be friendly with. Yeah. Uh, just going to save yourself the time and hassle of having to get, get through and take all those things out later. Yeah. I've, I've, I've gotten caught up in that myself. So. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and if you, uh, because I mentioned, uh, the pocket guide and setting your headings. Uh, if you set your headings correctly, uh, one amazing thing our system does is it can auto generate a table of contents based on the headings that you put in your book. So uh, that even allows you to kind of streamline that process, not have to worry about creating a table of contents of your own, linking things, because yeah. you know that's a lot of effort that you can just save yourself by putting all your headings in a heading one style in Word, submitting it to us, letting our system take care of it for you. And yeah. uh, even beyond that, once you get it uploaded, uh, a lot of like, you wanna make your headings fancier, you wanna make your scene breaks pop. Like you don't need to worry about that as much in the document um, because our system has styles that are available to, uh, to toy around with. Like you have a bunch of different options all designed by a very wonderful person uh, to give you a, uh, options where you don't have to worry about setting things up or putting things in the right place or worrying about sizing, let our system take care of it for you. So you mentioned uh, sizes and art. Uh, you mentioned uh, this sort of thing. So this is a great time to bring this question mm -hmm. in. Uh, nope, that wasn't the one I meant to click on, but we'll, uh, we'll answer it. So uh, yeah. sorry, John, we were, I swear I was going to come back to it, but here we are. Is there a standard size to adhere to, to provide the best quality cover image? Yeah, like I said, it's mostly 1600 by 2400 is probably your best bet. Um, it's going to give you a nice clear image. Going any larger than that, you're not. It's not going to matter on most e-reader screens. Going a lot smaller than that, and when it blows up, it's going to be really blurry or just not look as right as you want it to. So that's what you're looking for: a nice, nice clean front cover image. We do give you the those specs on the site when it gets to the point where you need to upload your cover. So if you yeah, and it, yeah. Doubt, yeah. <laughs> a super helpful thing on our site, if you see a little bubble with a question mark on it, yeah. hover over it and it will give you more information about the particular field you're entering. A lot of questions can sometimes yeah. be answered by just hovering over that. So that's what we need. I need to make us some t-shirts that have that little orange question mark on it. And then that way, when we go to conferences and stuff, people know to ask us for more information. First of all, you keep throwing around t-shirt talk. Uh, our department We're is not so getting pro, these t-shirts. <laughs> our department is so pro t-shirt. It's yeah. it's the thing we I'm pretty sure for in my fault. don't need, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the hang up on this. <laughs> so, all right, I will figure that out. I'll get that going. All right, here's the question I had actually intended to click on. Uh, so any chance you'll add more designs to the layouts? So are this, you are you in a position where you can answer that? I can't actually, because I do talk to the person who designs our layouts uh, fairly frequently. Uh, and the, ch the challenge with that is when we create a, a layout like style uh, design, um, that takes a copious amount of testing because we have to make sure that all those design elements function across 
all the e-readers we distribute to, and we distribute to a lot of e-readers because we're going to Apple and Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Scribd and the many places that we go to and their subsidiaries. So yeah. we want to make that those things take a lot of, of time to not just design, but to test. And that's time that we also want to make sure that we're using for a lot of the things we currently have in the pipe work, like uh, the pipeline, um, D to D print uh, improvements that we can make to our websites, both, draft to digital and books to read. There's a lot of things that we want to be able to do, but we have to be able to prioritize what is the thing that's going to make our service better consistently. And I'm sure that when we have the opportunity or when something comes up, there's going to be more designs somewhere along the line, but there's so many important things that our designer is currently working on that we want to make sure are up to the standard that we have. And yeah up to what we're looking to get done. So yeah. we understand the desire for more for more styles. We, we hear you, uh, but thank you for your patience. And I certainly hope that you appreciate the styles that we do currently have available as well. Yeah, and they're great and they're free. So and they're free, that's the other thing. They're free, just download the EPUB. You have pretty little style choices that are available for your ebook and for- Everyone if, always wants more. Throwing, yeah. Or, or if you're in, a, or you know, w w they'll be available too when D D print goes live. So exactly, yeah. I can't wait for D D print to go live. I'm so excited! <laughs> for those who are listening, you can get in on the beta. Uh, I even somewhere have a handy. Uh, there it is. You can you can get in on the print beta if you go to drafttodigital.com slash print beta, which is oh, so I've, difficult to remember. I've handed out that link so many a time. Go there. Get in. We're onboarding more people now. We made some improvements to the site for that. So, yeah. uh, and I love the I love the UI changes. Like it's it's something that we were brought in to like test it and make sure that things work for authors. And there's still some things that we're working on tweaking to make it a little bit easier for authors to understand certain things. But yeah. in the long run, especially once print goes live, those UI changes are a godsend, not just to us, but to our authors. So yeah, I love the fact that you guys are going in there and breaking this thing after I'd already, I've already finalized all the walkthrough videos. So thank you for that. Hey, that don't was my invite mark. Us to things after you make a video. Invite us to things before you make a video I, because I we're going to break it. We're not, we're not talking about this on air. Okay. All right. That's, that's fine. That's hey, Mark has one, one more question. This may wrap us up. So what are you most looking forward to with the things that are on the horizon for D2D? &D? So I think this is honestly an easy answer. It's what we were just recently talking about. It's uh D2D &D print. I'm so excited for us to get that uh, officially ready to launch wide. Um, it's obviously something we've been working on for a while. And it's something that when, when I mentioned earlier, we have like a DT standard, we want things to live up to. Yeah. It's like, it's a very high standard we set. And that's why we're taking this time in this beta to make sure that what we're putting out is a product that we can slap D to D on. And we're going to be proud of that. And like, Looking at the products that we've been able to create with it, like just uh, we have plenty of paperbacks in the office uh, and they're gorgeous. Um, and now the key is just making sure the process of them works and making sure that this is something that we can bring to our authors consistently. Um, I, I even went so far as to get like uh, one of our print, just to make sure I had something in the background. Well, so look I, at that. It wasn't living in a blank space. That's I know, it's almost thing. like I picked a very specific author to put on the ah. top of the pile. But yeah, it's uh, one of our glossy covers, um, has all the same like interior work. Uh, I think you use the, like your own PDF and your own yeah. uh, cover. So like it works well for that obviously, but then we have uh, just, Author, uh, authors that are using the uh, DC provide black co back cover. So uh, it was, I think Toby uh, programmed beautifully to be able to pick out the most prevalent cover color on your cover yeah. and create that as your back cover, use your description. If there's an author uh, description or an author photo, it's going to be at the bottom and yeah, uses all the same interior uses our like cool little design uh, images. So 
the product is gorgeous and it just makes me so excited to know that that's something we're working on getting out there at this point. I'm pretty excited about that too. And uh, it's very versatile. It's one of the best. I mean, there are plenty of POD services out there, but I feel like this one's going got something special. And uh, of course I would. I'm very biased. Wonderful author services. That's what it is. All right. Well, hey, Alexis, thanks so much for joining us and uh, giving us a little peek behind the curtain at Draft to Digital, uh, behind the spotlight, really. You got a chance to kind of see. This is the backstage of Draft to Digital. This so. is backstage. You got a backstage pass, everybody. Uh, if you're liking these D to D spotlights and the folks that we're talking to, we're talking to a whole bunch of industry insiders. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. You go to. Uh, Doggone it, I didn't correct that stupid URL. It's youtube.com slash C slash draft digital. I'm gonna fix that right after this. Yeah. And uh on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash draft to digital and follow us there. And you'll you'll be updated every time we have one of these guys. They're very helpful. And make sure you you bookmark d2dlive.com where you can see a nifty little countdown and get a some insight into the next guest. And tomorrow. I'm actually talking to my good friend Nick Thacker uh, right here on uh, DDD uh, Spotlight. We got so many titles now, Alexis. I'm I'm starting to mix them all up. The word slinging DDD Spotlight live tomorrow yep. at noon Central Time. So tune in for that. And beyond that, Alexis, thank you so much again. Thank you for having me, Kevin. It, honestly, this has been a pleasure. So thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you, everybody, and we'll, you can continue chatting all you want in the comments, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.